I was going to minister something else, and I said, no, Lord, I'm going to go ahead and do this because I know this is where we are, and I need to get this word out, amen. Uh, there's many, many watching us uh, online and people that uh, uh, follow this ministry and even see me as, a, as their pastor, and uh, they're holding on to this word just like y'all are, amen. So I want to get this out there and, 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 and remember that the Bible says, when you see these things, fear not. Amen. Fear not. So I don't want you to fear, but I want you to have understanding. Amen. Amen. All right. Come on, give my sons one more hand. Thank God for these young men. Amen. Better. Y'all do better. Y'all closing was doing good. Now y'all hair is off, so do better. <laughs> do better. Amen. I'm on these young boys. I told you there's, there's thousands of people watching now. Your wife might catch your head nap. You'd be like, that's his head <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta think like that. When I was single, I thought like that. You never came out wrong when you were single. All right. Um, so we're gonna, so this is called. America's payment for perversion. Amen. America's payment for perversion. This is actual judgment. And it's not coming. It is here. Amen. It is here. If you, did, if you have not seen the message that I ministered on uh, emergency preparedness workshop, you need to go watch Amen. that message. Because it really is time to prepare. Amen. I'm not just saying that. I'm telling you it's this. I'm telling you, it's here. Um, prepare why your money's worth something. I'm just, I'm just, just telling you. I mean, a lot. Of, it's very difficult for us to believe that because we've grown up in a generation where we've never had any trauma, trouble for real. But now we, it is upon us, and it's hard to wrap our mind around it. And that's why people would rather stick their hand in the sand and not pay attention to it because it's easier to do that than to accept the fact that the end of that book is, we're living in it. We're living in the end, amen? Amen, so, um, so make sure that you um, prepare, amen? Uh, I told you, I, 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 I put the message online, I told people on Facebook, everywhere I could get that message out, that you, know, you need to have some months supply worth of things, amen? Just in case something happens. You have to realize that the reason why they won't they not, the media won't report this, is, is they're trying to stop people from being prepared. Amen. See, they're not ready for the system to implode. That's why they keep on keeping the stock market from, from falling. Amen. The thing you need to understand, the stock market is going to fall. Amen. I mean, it, it could have failed yesterday, it could fail today. It's going to fall, and when it falls, it's gonna fall hard. It's gonna fall very hard, amen? And. Um, we're going to see some of those things that Revelations was talking about. Now, 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 now the reason for this is, has to do with uh, Sodom, the judgment of Sodom. Um, we have, if you, if you have noticed since the passage of gay marriage, how rampant evil has increased. How much perversion has just come full steam uh, they've just passed a law here, an, an ordinance here in our schools that transgender children have to be accepted and transgenderism amongst the kids. And I mean, look at how because of them messing with that one ancient principle, the Bible says do not remove the, do not remove the, um, the ancient landmarks, the boundaries of the ancient. In other words, those people that had gone before you, they set boundaries in order to have safe society. And when you move those things, you mess with those things, what are you doing is you're opening a door and you're letting the, and, and, and everything's gonna flood in and that's what has happened. And so what has happened is the, the speed of judgment is coming, the acceler it's like it accelerated. Not only did it accelerate, but evil has accelerated. It's almost like evil is moving so fast that you cannot keep up with all the evil that's going on. 
you wake up the next day and there's a catastrophic event, there's a major happening, and it's, and it's so, it's so, it's coming so fast that you're getting desensitized to it. Because notice how now police are shooting black boys and we're not even sensitized to that no more. We was all Black Lives Matter, but because of the repetitive, because of the consistency and the, and, and the repetitiveness of it, we've almost become numb and since desensitized to it. This is part of Satan's plan so that we just get tired of even focusing on what's going on and bury our head in the sand and just try to figure out a way to be happy and, and, and go on, not as if nothing's ever happened. It's the Titanic Syndrome, yeah. which is what we're dealing with. We know we hit an iceberg. We know the boat is going down, but yet let's keep playing. Let the music keep going as if this water is not going to eventually get in this boat and destroy everything. But this is where America is. We are in a state of mass denial. Say mass, mass. denial. denial. When you look, when, 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 when you look uh, ever since 9-11, Americans have been in a state of mass denial. When you look at the faces of people, if you look close enough, it's almost as if everybody knows something is coming, but nobody wants to say it. Nobody wants to talk about it. Everybody knows it's there, but nobody wants to really look at it. We're in a state of mass denial. For some reason, people are beginning to wake up to the fact that maybe the end of that book was true, and maybe really what I was hearing about Revelations was really going to happen. And so, but there's a mass denial about what's going on, amen? And even Christians, those that follow Christ, are in mass denial because many of them don't live the standard of the Word of God. Therefore, why would they want to see the end of the book? You don't live right, well, I don't want to see the end of the book. Those of us who are striving, not perfect, but striving to keep oil in our lamps, we're saying that if our Lord would come in the midnight hour, we'll strike up this fire that we have been cultivating. And so there'll be a, there's going to be a war between those who burned their lamps and those who kept their lamps. And I'm going to try to be a keeper of my lamp, and you can burn your lamp for the world, but I'm... Anyway, but this is where we are now. So turn over to Jude chapter 1. There is no more time. I've preached many times, get ready, get prepared. It's coming. This going to happen. I'm not, I'm not saying it no more. I'm saying it's here. Everything I've been preaching for the last two, three, four years is here. It's on us now. You living it. You watching it every day. Who thought China's economy would fail? They supposed to be the superpower bigger than us. As a matter of fact, we owe them, we owe them money. Come, come on, fix this. We owe China money. We owe them trillions of dollars. Yet their economy failed before us. Now that should tell you, if you owe, if, if the person you owe is doing bad, then you got to be lying about what you're doing. Because if I owe you and you, but I'm doing better than you, but yet I owe you money, then if, then if you're doing bad and I owe you, how really bad am I doing? That's America. So what people don't know is they're taking money from the Federal Reserve and putting in the stimulus packages and putting it in Wall Street to keep the Dow Jones going up. That's what they keep doing to make you think everything's fine because they know the minute that people figure out it ain't going to be no recovery, they're going to go and pull out their 401ks, they're going to pull out all of their money from the banks, and it's going to be an implosion. The, prob the problem is when you pull it out, the money ain't going to be worth nothing. That's why you better take now, take, take your money now and prepare now. Do it with your money now. No need to try and buy survival stuff when, when the money ain't worth nothing. And it's coming. The money is all, it's almost, we are, not almost, we are there. The, we are there. You could have woke up to, but today and your money could have been worth nothing. That's how close, that's, we there. I mean, I don't know what else to tell people. I got rice. I told y'all. I never thought I would have to, to need that. I never thought I would need that, but I'm, I'm realizing that how are we going to keep preaching about something and then not prepare for it? At some point, you got to see it's, it's happening. Now, y'all hearing what I'm saying? So you better be preparing. Look at that message I preach, emergency preparedness workshop. It may save your life. Amen. It may save your life. Amen. All right. So, so now, now all of this stuff is happening because of something. In other words, things just don't happen for nothing. Amen. Iniquity is the cause of judgment. And, if, and look at how in Detroit they unveiled the statue of Satan. I mean, look at the stuff. I'm, I'm talking about since they did the gay marriage thing, look at everything. I mean, it's just like the boundaries is off. Whatever you want to do, be, you know, pedophilias with the children, say man. The sandwich man's raping little girls, you know. I mean, there's so many little, it's so much stuff you just can't even keep your mind on. 
all the stuff because it's too, it come out every day. I said, the sandwich man. Notice they didn't boycott Subway like they took the Cosby show off TV, though. He's raping little girls. These are grown women who chose to be, get drugged. Bill Cosby drug grown chicks. <laughs> who you ain't gonna fool me that they didn't want to be there for sex in the first place. I know you ain't going, that's Bill Cosby. You went there for sex. He was just more freaky than you thought and, and tricked and tripped you up because he might have wanted some type of sex you wasn't into, so he gives you some stimulus. But Jerry's over a tricking 14 year olds, and that's a whole nother level. And he got many counts of it, and they gave this guy like a year and a half. And nobody boycotted Subway. Depressed us, went on, let it go. See, that's how they killed our stories quick. Why ain't nobody, what about the, the white boy that killed the black people in the church? Nobody, they don't even hear his name no more. Don't even hear his name no more. They get rid of their cats real fast. Amen. Then his cat, the day they walked up, shot two reporters on the air. I mean, it's just crazy stuff going on. And I think that's, they go ahead and try to take guns over that one. But you have to understand that everything you see is a, is a direct result of judgment. It's upon us. Amen. Amen. Are y'all Jude? J-U-D-E, Jude. I'm just going to look at verse 7. It says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So what was the reason for judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah? Fornication. Strange flesh. Did you know strange flesh, what it means, strange flesh? It means having sex with things you ain't supposed to have sex with. It's not just having sex with homosexuality. It meant beasts, birds, different type of beings, creatures. They got totally perverted. And that perversion brought the judgment of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The reason why we don't understand this is because we don't understand that perver perversion is worship to Satan. That's how you worship Satan, with perversion. When God looks down and sees his creation, having sex with animals and men having sex with men, Satan, he knows yes. Satan's being worshipped. Yes. And, and, and when we legalize it, which means we lose our objection of it, right. we, now God says, I can judge the nation. Yes. Because the nation did not have enough outcry to stop that. Now, why we say we was against gay marriage, yet we've been watching gay shows the whole time. Why we say we wasn't for the homosexuality, say amen, yet we've been fornicating. See, hypocritical judgment is no judgment at all. <laughs> A hypocrite, hypocrite's judgment power is zero. So if I'm in fornication and I'm going to judge somebody because he's having homosexual sex, yet I'm, I'm fornicating. It's, I'm still breaking the commandments of the Lord. So therefore, I'm a hypocrite trying to judge somebody. Say amen. amen. So most of, so are y'all there? Amen. And the biggest point of all that we missed it on, the, the, the really to show the truth, is that we have allowed, look at how wicked Planned Parenthood really is. All this time, we didn't know how truly wicked they were. Now we're seeing undercover videos that these cats is selling body parts. Yes. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yes. So, you know, we, 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 we have no... Now, now, this is the thing that is judging, God is judging uh, the nation for. Are y'all there? Go to Genesis 19. This curse of Sodom is where the great judgment is coming from. The Bible says they, they parade or flaunt their sin like Sodom. They hide it not. These are the children of pride. They, they hide not their sin. They are proud of it. That's why they got to go out in the streets. Notice homosexuals never wanted to really just have sex with, with one person in the house, in the closet, not in the closet, in your bedroom. They don't want that. They want it in the streets. Let's go out. We got to parade our sin. We got to flaunt our sin, which shows you the spirit behind it. Had to be Satan flaunting, putting it in God's face. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So they hide it not. Therefore, the judgment has to be severe. 
Now, God can deal with a lot of things, but when we begin to, uh, but certain things we begin to do is an abomination, and these abominations bring swift judgment, which means God will allow some things. The Bible says sometimes he'll wink at some things like, okay, I see you doing it, but then there are some things he say, no, sir, this, I got to judge this right now. Well, if you look at how fast and swiftly this, this judgment is coming upon us since they passed gay marriage and you see how the fire's out of control and everything's out of control and everything we're saying is unprecedented floods, unprecedented tornadoes. We got all kinds of stuff and we still don't realize that this increase, it's not the fact that we've never had disasters, it's the increase of them. Yeah. We've never had them repetitively back to back to back to back to back. While one's going on, another's happening. While one's, we, you know, it's, it's constantly something going on. And people, because they uh, are so, uh, uh, so, so, um, so unbelieving and angry, really, at God, they figured how, well, we can't stop the disasters, but we will try to make it better afterwards. So instead of, so they go, go fund me. That's their way of shaking their fists in God's face, like they said, like Esau and them, Esau, Esau and them said that if you tear it down, we'll rebuild it. Right, right. That's what they're saying to God. We're not gonna we're not gonna praise you and give you glory so you won't tear it down. We go, let's go and tear it down, we'll rebuild it. Wow, wow. That's the pride of this generation. God said, Oh, when I tear it down, there ain't gonna be no stone left Amen. on another. Amen. Are y'all there? So look at Genesis 19. I want to show you. I want to be clear because, you know, we say judgment is coming from many things. And, and I do know that abortion has definitely uh, got to be the top of the list. I'm not going to ever say that. But see, abortion is just a part. It's just a, a byproduct of sexual sin. See, married people ain't aborting babies. But abortion is a byproduct of sexual sin. So we still have to deal with the sexual sin. So the sexual sin was at its epitome, its height in Sodom and Gomorrah. They was doing everything you could think of sexually because that's how you worship Satan. Now you understand what I'm saying? God said their sin is so strong that man, I, had, I, 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 I looked down at what they doing and they done done some stuff that I didn't even think people could do. And he said, I'm going to send some angels down there and we're going to get this straightened out. Are y'all there? Now God is very mindful of his people. Amen? For God could have just destroyed Sodom, but he knew Lot was there. And God, because he's a righteous God, he'll always have a remnant. He won't kill everybody, but he will have a remnant of people. Those remnant of people have to be covenant people, not only covenant, but they have to be, have enough righteousness, say amen, that they will be spared. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we're going to look at this. Look at Genesis 19. I believe, I really believe America is at the point of no return. You know, for years we used to say revival, you know, revival, maybe, maybe God will turn. No, we, we, I don't think it's happening no more. I think it's no more chances. I think it's no more chances. And the reason why I think that is because of how our political system has no respect at all for godliness, at all, none. They just hired the first transgender in the White House. See, they doing this stuff, putting it in God's face. They keep putting it in God's face. Where's the boy that went to the NFL? Where's he at? They didn't want him. You know why? Because he was a weak player. He just capitalized off being gay. Then, they, then now he's somewhere saying he got some mental health, mental illness problems. Well, you know he was mentally ill. To <laughs> you got to be ill. <laughs> I mean, even the Bible says it's unseemly. You know, seemly means stuff that you just can't think about. This, this, is, this is something that's too great to think about. So if you're doing stuff too great to think about, you already got mental problems. But yet they celebrated him, no, but nobody wants to talk about his mental breakdowns from his unseemly lifestyle. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They gave, they, they gave Bruce Jenner a show, celebrated the foolishness. Say amen. And so we have to understand that this is all thumbing it in God's face. Like, what you going to do? And they proud about it. So God is saying that, uh, that, that, that I'm going to sit up high and I'm just going to laugh. God said, I'm going to laugh. When calamity come upon you, you're going to call out to me and I'm going to just laugh. Matter of fact, he said, I'm going to mock you. Like Elijah was mocking the, the, the prophets of Baal. Where your God at? 
where you God see if those idols you were serving will, 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 will save you. See if to Beyonce and Jay-Z will save you. See if them people, Nicki Minaj them, and see if them blunts and all that stuff that you, you love will save you. Because God said, I'm going to laugh at the time of your calamity. And it really disturbed me a little bit. Then I said, it's just like a person with power. Just sit back and just say, okay, I'm gonna, I told you, now I'm going to so laugh. So that's my position. That's my position too. We told you. Are y'all there? And some of you halfway in and out Christians, I, to I told you. Stop playing with God. Amen. You be playing around, and, so, and now the deception is so strong, it's, it's yanking people for, from, from, from the Lord for real. Amen. See, there's some stuff out there that you can get caught up in that mess your mind up, and you won't, may not be able to get back right. So quit playing around with God. Okay, verse, uh, chapter 19, let's look at verse 1. And there came two angels, angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate. Of Sodom and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them and bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Now Lot, you know, <laughs> you know, Lot was a wicked dude for real though. You study who Lot was. But Lot had enough righteousness to know these as angels. He had enough. I see, I, you know, you see, even the worst person has some good in him. And Lot was one of them type people who you knew he was a bad dude, like Ern. But for some reason, God liked Ern. But Ern was the one that built the golden calf for the people and said that I just threw gold in the fire and the calf jumped out. This is what this guy told Moses. Moses, I left you down here. I left you down here in charge. I come down, the people are naked, dancing around the fire and the calf. And Ern, he said, what happened, Ern? Oh, man, I took earrings and we just threw it in the fire and this golden calf jumped out. This guy's a straight liar and, and hates accountability. And who would make him the head, the pre, the high priest? So, so even in the worst person, God still sees redemptive value. And so Lot's one of them kind of people that I did never like Lot. When I first read it, I never liked Lot. I always thought Lot was a bad dude because I felt like Lot, you broke up with Abraham. This is Abraham. You, you blessed because of Abraham, yet you're going to fall out with Abraham over some land that you wouldn't even have no sheep if it wasn't for Abraham. But for some reason, uh, uh, you know, God in his infinite wisdom knew Lot had something in him. Amen. Ain't that awesome? Wow. That even though you are, you're a mess, yeah. God knows there's a message in, and he was a message in Lot. And so God preserved Lot because of the investment he had in Lot. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Look at verse 2. And he said, behold now, my lords, I turn in. I pray you, into your servant's house and stay all night and wash your feet and you should rise up early and go on your way. And they said, nay, but we will abide in the street. Now Lot knew because he was from Sodom. Lot knew. You can't, out, you can't stay out here because these dudes, they do unseemly things. So Lot was, well Lot, and I believe Lot, knowing they was angels, was trying to spur the city. Knowing that if y'all, man, if you try to rape these angels, the whole city's in trouble. And Lot say, my house is her. Now, you know, Lot then was in love with their house. Yeah. That's why his wife turned to salt, because she, she looked back because of the house that they had in Sodom. So Lot was like, I don't build, you know how you build a, you can live in a bad spot. But she's like, look, it's, I'm built a nice house here. We doing well here. I ain't really, even though it's an evil going on, it, hey, I'm, I paid for it. You know, and I'm doing well, and I don't really want nothing to mess with that. So I knew Lot was looking like, wait a minute, these, these perverted cats, man, they raping dudes. And if these angels come to the city, the city may be destroyed because they're they trying to, they're going to rape the angels of God. So he's trying to come on in the house. Are y'all there? And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him and entered into the house, uh, and entered into his house, and he made them feast. Now, see, you know that now, the, you know, in the gay community said that uh, that 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 Sodom and Gomorrah was not destroyed for a perversion, but even Jews said about fornication. Right. But they said it wasn't it wasn't destroyed for homosexuality. Uh, they was destroyed for the lack of hospitality. Well, if that was the case, then Lot was hospitable. Did not Lot offer them to come into a lot was hospitable so at least one man was hospitable in Sodom so it couldn't have been for the lack of hospitality because obviously they knew how to treat people 
But you know, that was the lie they was using to make you, to overlook the fact that, um, to overlook the fact that it was about, it was about uh, having uh, two men and having sex with each other and, and two, it was about perversion. You, do y'all got what I'm saying? And he pressed upon him, great, okay. And, and entered his house and made him a feast and did break unleavened bread and they did eat. But before they lay down, this is the spirit, this is, this, this is the spirit because you got to realize that this is a night spirit. See, it's a nice spirit. See, if you, if, see, if, see, if, see, if, see, if, if you, I don't suggest you do it, but if you ride certain places, you see these Corey Bont boys out at night. You see them standing on corners over on Main Street, Market Street, walking around. This is a night spirit. If you notice, most of this stuff they're doing is at nighttime. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They're out all night. This, uh, this, is a, this, is a, this is a restless demon that possesses people and has them out at night looking to fulfill the lust that they have burning in their heart. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even to the point that they don't care if they, if they, if, if, if AIDS or whatever, because they got to fulfill the lust. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is the spirit that our country has said support. This is the spirit that we have thumbed our face, thumbed our fingers in the no in the face of God, saying, "Accept this." Are you hearing what I'm saying? So. Now, 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 before they lay down, which means the brothers couldn't even get a chance to rest. That's how, they, that's how their spirit is. They couldn't even get it. They won't let the men rest. And it says, before they lay down, the men of the city. Now, that's not one man. That's the, the, if you say men, that means all the men in the whole city. It's, <laughs> can you imagine? All the men in the city. It's coming after two dudes. Look how, look, now, now, they, 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 first of all, put your, wrap your mind around the fact it's a city full of gay dudes. Everybody's with this. It's a city that everybody's with this. Not only are they with this, they all participate in rape. This spirit of perversion is not going to rest at consent. Do y'all hear what I'm telling y'all? It's not going to rest at consent. It's perversion. Part of the high of the sex is the risk. Part of the, part of the thrill for these cats is the pain. Because most of them were caused pain because they were raped when they were little. And their wives are crossed and they're messed up in the mind. And part of the thrill of that sex is not just two men getting it on. It's pain. So they do things they don't tell you that they do to make you think they normal. They do things with horses and donkeys that they don't make. Y'all want to talk. I'm telling you. The, if the hospital would be truthful, they would say how many of them come up in a hospital ruptured. Because they done done things. Pushing the boundaries and limits and because they're trying to fulfill a unscratchable itch. Lust is never satisfied. So you got to keep on going and keep on going and keep on going. And this is the spirit of perversion. It does not, it has no end to it. This is why the Bible says once you open the door to it, now what you see, let's have sex with animals. Now, the reason why God destroys, listen, y'all, let me show y'all. The reason why God destroys a nation or society when they get into homosexuality is because God knows once they get into homosexuality, this other door is going to open to everything else because perversion is going to say, I'm not, I'm not satisfied with this. I want something else. Now, the reason why God destroys a society at that point is because at that point, they're going to mess with creation because they're going to start having sex with animals. Then you're going to start birthing creatures hybrid creatures that will have sex with humans that will pervert the DNA of human of humanity that's why judgment comes when that when that sin is rampant y'all didn't catch what I said if you study what happened with the fallen angels the Bible said they sinned against birds beast what was they doing having sex what was the goal what was Satan using them to do to change God's creation to change the DNA 
Well, when, that's why when two men start having sex with each other, it's always an abomination, but that's just the open door that is needed for men that start having sex with other creatures. What did the Bible say in Jude? It said they start having sex with strange flesh. That means other things other than humans. Strange flesh means other than humans. So they were having sex with other stuff. So it wasn't just the men they were having sex with. They were having sex with everything else. Now, what happens in that is that what well, science don't even teach it, didn't even teach us in school, is that if, if your seed goes into an animal, it will mix with an animal. The same way if your seed goes into a, per, a woman, it, if, if she's a white woman and you're a black man, y'all see the mix come out with a mixed child. Well, if it's an animal, it, it, it will come out with a mixed animal and human in human capabilities. These are the demons that was produced through the fallen angels mixing, uh, mixing, mixing seed with seed. That's why the, 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 the Satan is, is like, uh, he's represented by goat, pan, pan, P-A-N, and he had sex with goats, animals. That's why pan is half man, half goat. That's why everything y'all see in fashion is really fashioned after the goat now. Shoes and then platform shoes is look, supposed to make your feet look like Hoofs, it's Baphomet, the Nene dance is Baphomet. That's, that's the Baphomet dance. It's representing Baphomet. Why y'all been doing it don't know what it is. That's why you look gay doing it. You can't even look straight doing it. You see boys doing it, they might be tough, but the minute they do it, you're like, what? the gayness come out of them. Even the movement is gay. Meaning, boys ain't supposed to be doing that. But see, that's the, that's, it's, it's a Baphomet pose. That's what it is. And so, 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 so let me get this straight for homosexuals. I don't want them to think I'm, I'm kicking off on them. I'm, judgment is not just coming because of them. When you see, when you see the legalization of homosexual, that's the sign that we're about to change your creation. Y'all didn't hear what I was saying. That's why judgment comes so swiftly. Because God knows, let me, oh, got to hurry up now. Because they're they going to they mess with my creation and mess with this DNA chain. And so let me go ahead and I got to go ahead and get judging. And that's why every time you see that rampant perversion, you see judgment. And, but we keep saying it's only because of homosexuality. But now y'all see there's something else coming through the pipe that's much deeper and different and, and more dest destructive than even homosexuality. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It's when women start marrying dogs and having puppies and puppy babies. And you're going to start. Now, what happens to these creatures? These creatures grow up. Do you think the government don't already know you can breed animals with people? That's why if you look, if you look in Revelation, you see these strange creatures. Why do you think demons always got a humanoid look? They look, some parts of them are human, but the most, some, you know, say, the Bible say had a, had a face of a man and, 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 and legs of, a, of, a, of, a, of an eagle and a beast. And what is that from? This is it's interbreeding with, with different species. And so homosexuality is us telling God that we are no longer your creation. We want to make our own people. So God says, before I let y'all do that, angels go down. These cats done went too far. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we've thrown off on the homosexuals, which that's just the, that's just like the, you know, the homos when you see homosexuality accepted by culture, that's just the, that's just the, um, the, um, that's just the marker, that's just the, the, the billboard saying that we're ready for this next level. And then God says, okay, well, I got to stop y'all. And that's why, if you look at what happened, what did, what what why did, what was God what was God looking for in the days of Noah? Those that were not mixed, their blood was not mixed with fallen angel DNA. Not only did it, see you got to we just keep saying fallen angels, but you got to realize that, that 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 these they were having sex with animals, and so they were creating different beasts and hybrid creatures. And then when those beasts and hybrid creatures died, uh, uh, their their body, their flesh died, but their spirit still lived. And that's the demons that we're seeing. That's the demons you're fighting. That's why they don't look human. They sin, when the Bible says sin against birds, and they sin against animals by having sex with creatures. Do y'all not understand that? Do you not understand that's what Satan is covering up? He's trying to show people, I'm not trying to show y'all. Y'all think it's about sex, human stuff. I'm trying to get y'all into something deeper than that. Y'all think this human thing is where I'm at. Man, I'm not even in the human thing. I'm trying to erase your DNA. I'm trying to change who you are. And we, uh, we keep focusing on the flesh, but see, when we start experimenting 
even with man and man and what that's saying that we're ready for the perversion that if you because see if you would then if you would if you would disobey God sexually with a man and a man and a woman and a woman then it then because it's a spirit of lust in you that'll never be satisfied it's a matter of time before that demon suggests now when I was over in Nigeria I was over in Nigeria and I would see guys getting delivered they would have sex with dogs Mr. Brothers have sex with dogs. I don't know how this one brother came. He was having sex with chickens. I couldn't figure out how he did it. But he was doing it. He was having sex with chickens. Now, you know, he was impregnating these animals and these hybrid creatures is being born. So it's not enough just to, so that's, see, that's what I'm saying. You, you don't understand the depth of perversion. So you're thinking about what this stuff that they're doing. But there's another level. And this level is what you call the Pandora's box. This, this, is, this means that this is total destruction. See, it, 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 we, we, you will slowly die if men have sex with men. You will extinct ourselves, right? But if you start having sex with animals, you will create creatures that will kill you. <laughs> you will extinct, you will literally extinct yourself. This is why God says now it's time to, time to. Is this too much for y'all to understand? So stop getting arguing the point of just the homosexuality. Homosexuality is the billboard that we're going into this. Remember I told y'all, I said, I said this when they pass this, watch what's happening, what's going to happen. And all of a sudden you're going to see all this other stuff coming out. So it's not just the homosexual stuff. Where I stop at? Okay, before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, come pass around about the house. Listen, both old and young. What's it? Whoa, whoa, what's it? So I told you, you the talk, they keep making you think we just, that, that, that we, we just, you know, we, it's just about consent. Now you know them little boys was raped. Now y'all know they raped them little boys. Them little boys wouldn't have been perverted except they was already raped. Because the way homosexuals, they cannot produce children, but they produce disciples. They become mentors, which the word mentor is a Greek term that really comes from tormentor, which means an older man having sex with a boy. That's where the word mentor comes from. See, they, see so mentoring was actually producing that homosexual spirit in the next generation. So they don't have children. They take your children and mentor them. So when you see old and young, you're not, see, you're just thinking about these cats in the parade and dancing, but what they won't show you is the stuff they're doing in the Boy Scouts and the stuff they're doing. And why, why do these guys want to be around children? And what, what is it? Because there is a spirit in them that wants to mentor. And they mentor them and they pick out the ones with effeminacy tendencies. And they target them. And that's why you keep seeing these brothers with porn in their phone, child pornography. Where are they coming from? These are the priests and the teachers. Where is it coming from? These are people who put themselves in a position to mentor. So young and old. That means boys. Little boys is out there at the door trying to have sex with these, these men. Look at this here. He says... Um, Five. Uh, no, 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 wait a minute. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, come past the, the, the house round about, both young and old. All the people from every quarter, all the people. What spirit is this strong that everybody come? Because it wasn't just, a lot of them wasn't coming just to have sex. A lot of them was what you call exhibitionists or voyeurs because historically there were beds in the square where they would have sex in the square. And many would look on the perversion like you're looking at the gladiators in the ring. This is how deep that culture was to the point that even though you might be into it, but you say, come on, child, you get your child to come and watch. The perversion. Now you can understand adults, but would you bring your child? That's how deep it was. 
this is where we're headed. That's why they are in the schools, training your child, teaching them about the two daddies and the pedophilia uncles, teaching them. They're normalizing it to them so that they'll get to a point that where they won't have any boundaries. Are y'all there? And they called Lot and said unto him, where are the men? Yeah, I just imagine the, the, the but but I, but I, but you know what? I don't believe these was feminine men. I believe these was masculine men that just like have, that was perverted and had like have sex with men. See the the the, the, the feminine man is a the feminine man is a it's not camouflage. Give me another word. Throw off, but I, yeah, you need another word. It's not, not necessarily pawn, something like that, but. No, 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 that's the result, huh? Um, yeah, I could say poster child. The feminine man is the poster child. Because they, they want you to get that image because they want you to think the man just wants to be a woman. What they don't want you to realize is it's not about that man being feminine. It's about perversion. Because if you study homosexuality, you'll find out that those Greek warriors, them three hundreds, they was homosexuals. The Titans, the Spartans, they would have their lovers fighting with them in the field. So, so, so true homosexuality was, a, was not feminine. It was perversion. It was men that loved having sex with men. But it wasn't just a feminine, they throw off when they make you see those feminine, and they make you think these brothers are just a woman to trap a man by, no, they ain't, no, because they really don't want to be a woman. They had to be, the, 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 we only would accept them, because we, they come, made us think, if you want to have sex with a man, you must want to be a woman. But the anomaly came in with the Downlow brothers, and you found out, see, there was an anomaly with them, because you were like, wait, these brothers don't really want to be females, but they say they just like having sex with men. So that's the real spirit. It's not the flamboyant fag you see in. It's the real spirit is the one that is masculine. Like in penitentiary. That's the real spirit. It ain't necessarily no them Cory bonds. Them are different. But they make you think that's what gay men want to be. But if you notice more and more, gay men look more straight and more straight and more, they dress with suits, they do look more straight. You wouldn't even know they was gay till they start talking. Then when they start talking, you say, oh yeah, she's sweet because when, when they talk, they have to put a little. But the majority of them be talk to be talk, and see there's so many men, see the down low shoulders that a lot of gay, we gotta redefine this because they ain't all wanna be sweet. The same way that Lesbians ain't just butch looking. You find out beautiful females have a spirit on them to be with a woman. Because what we're talking about, perversion, it's a spirit. We're not talking about a, a parent, we're talking about a spirit. But in order for the lesbians to be accepted as lesbians, they had to act like that they really was, wanting to, was a boy or b born in a woman's body, so they played up to be boys. But in reality, them being attracted to women didn't really want to make them being masculine. They thought that's what they had to be. Because, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? What, they was wrong, what, they, what it was, it was a spirit of lust in them that lusted women. And, many, and if I go deeper, the majority of them have, have, have <laughs> it's too deep, it's too deep, it's too deep, it's too deep, it's too deep. I ain't, I ain't really did the teaching on this, and if I say this, I'll be able to write and be like, okay, now, what, now, now tell me what that is. But i tell you, but I said something about it, but I ain't really went that deep. The majority of lesbians have the giant man spirit in them. The giant man is, is see, you got to realize the, 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 the Nephilim, which is a, it's a, it's a form of a spiritual husband, but it's a giant man. And so that giant man wants, wants women. 
So it just creates lust to make a woman lust a woman because the giant man in him wants a woman. The woman herself might not want to be a man, but it's a perverted spirit that's motivating her to want women because that's what he wants. Flip it to the men. What, what's that noise? Who? What's that noise? Come on, fix that. Yeah, somebody they didn't like that giant man. <laughs> Amen. That's good. It went out. It went out. That's it. I'm I'm good. Leave it. And so the same way with the 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 the, the homosexual men, they usually have a spirit of the queen of the coast, or Jezebel, or a us or a or a, or a marine mermaid spirit that makes them want to, you know, lust men. See, after you think about that, it makes sense. That a man has a female spirit, and that's why he's acting female. And a, man, and a woman has a male masculine spirit, and that's why she's acting masculine. So they're not homo nothing. It's a spirit in them that wants what it wants. That's why he, I've even been in Nigeria, and when the people are getting delivered and the demons... It'd be a woman getting delivered, and the demon would speak out and say, this is your husband next to you. The, 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 they would tell the woman, the woman that was possessed, they would tell the woman, this, is this your husband next to you? And the demon would say, look at the man, say, can a man marry a man? Even in the spirit world, they know that's wrong. <laughs> Even in the spirit world, they know that's wrong. I've heard him say it. I've, I've heard him say, can a man, the demon is a man. He said, I'm a man. He's speaking out of the woman. And he said, I'm a husband. The sp I'm a spiritual husband. And then the, the deliverer will say, but your hu her husband, your husband's right here. Look at your husband. And the demon will say, can a man marry a man? He stole my wife. See, this is what's behind this. And see, we don't even know that. We just think, yeah. you don't know where your motivations are from. Amen. Let's keep going. Amen. Let's see here. Okay, let's see. Where I stop at? Let me try to get done. I'm trying to tell y'all what the judgment is. Because what are we going to get into? Changing creation. What are they trying to do? Everything is trans. Everything is trans. Transgender, uh, transhuman. Uh, what's the thing where they putting the, the computers in us? Everything's trans. It's all trans, which means change. To change. The goal is to change God's creation into an image. Take you from the image of, of God into the image of Satan. Are y'all there? This is the purpose behind tattoos. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody asked me what I do or teaching on piercings. It's evil. <laughs> I'll just remember, they, somebody wrote me and said what I do or teaching on piercings. I ain't going to do no teaching. I'm just going to tell you. It's evil. Don't do it. But, the, but, but part of this transformation of people transforming themselves even this makeup has to do with Satan. Because I saw some today where this is an albino girl. And this is makeup though, she was the, the, her shades was a little dark, she was beautiful. And the make and then and I think somebody wrote makeup gotta be all the devil. Cause because when they took the makeup off Man, she looked like a ghost. I mean, she was destructive. But with the makeup, she was beautiful. And see what, and the reason why they're using makeup, I'm telling you what they're doing. The reason why they're using makeup is because these boys are going to be catching other men because you're not going to know if these are boys or not. And you brothers out there gambling in the club, you may say you ain't going to do it. 
But when you high and some pills are in you and you think it's as a woman and you get to that point. <laughs> see, but they be saying, I, I never do that. But see, you high and you to the point. Well, you thought this was a woman because ain't no way to know till you get to the point. <laughs> till you get to the point. <laughs> When you get to the point, you, you might be too stirred up. Then after that, you are gay. No need in trying to act like, I oh, see, man, I ain't know what I done now, do you? You are gay. You are gay. And dude, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> now, this is, but this is the confusion that we have now. And so if I wasn't, if I wasn't married, oh my goodness. Whew, I'd be scared of chicks, boy, if I wasn't married, because who knows what they are. You have to use spiritual discernment. Okay, where I stop at? Let me get done. And they called unto Lot and said to him, where are the men's? You know, that's how they're going to say it. Where's the men that came into thee this night? Bring them out to us that we may know them. Now, they tried to act like that word no wasn't the same no that they used for sex in the Bible. Y'all didn't want to be friends because what time is it? It's nighttime. You ain't making friends at night. You want to know them sexually. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, I have two daughters. This shows you they talk about sex. Why would Lot even come talking about his daughters? Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you. Now, see, me, I would have said these brothers can take care of themselves. I ain't going to sacrifice my daughter. They take care of themselves. These are men. These are angels. Why would you sacrifice your daughters? I told you I didn't like Lot. I don't know his ways. I didn't like some of the stuff he would do. That was always made me thought like, dude, what kind of dude are you? Why would you? Why, even if these men couldn't take care of themselves, they might have had to get it. But I don't want my daughter. I love my daughters. I mean, if God sent them, God going to take care of them. No need in me in being involved. Did not God send them? Does he not provide where until he sent them? But see, because Lot said kind of do. That's the logic he had. But you really truthfully, Lot, Lot has saw this before. Lot saw what they would do. And Lot knew what they would do to men probably. And Lot probably knew they don't want no women anyway. Hoping that would make them just go on. But 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 Lot knew that they would what they would do. He knew that because because what would happen if all these men? I mean, it's this it's destruction of the, you're gonna kill the men. And he and Lot went and 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 said, I pray. Okay, now behold, I have two daughters which have not no man. I pray you bring them out. I pray you bring out them unto you, and do ye them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore. Came they under the shadow of my roof, and they say, "Stand back!" I thought, I, 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 I thought, I thought this is about love and acceptance and tolerance. I'm showing you the spirit here. They didn't get stand back, and they said again, "This fellow talking about a lot now. This guy then came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge." That's the spirit on them. How you going to judge us? He ain't even from her. How he going to come in and judge us in our city? That's what they say when you try to say something. How you going to judge? Can I judge me? Showing you this is the spirit. Now we will deal worse with thee. 
than with them. And they press so upon the man. <laughs> Even Lot and came there to break the door down. This is how bad his spirit is. The men ain't going to be safe. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot in the house and shut the door and smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both great, both small and great, so they wearied themselves to find the door. Wow. Now, I really truly believe that God sent them men down there yeah. as a test. I believe before God judged that city, he sent them men down there as a test. I'm going to show you why I believe this. Because after they was going to rape these men, it was no doubt what this city is about. Because right in verse 12, it says, And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou any besides thee? It's on. Get your people out. They done, we done, they done showed us. Ain't no redemption. They fear nothing. This is where America is. Son-in-law and thy sons and daughters and whatsoever thou hast in this city bring out of this place, for we will destroy this place. Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Get up, get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. They didn't want to believe it. When the morning rose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife, thy two daughters, which is her, lest thou be consumed in iniquity. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the wife of, and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters. The Lord being merciful unto them, they brought them forth and set them without the city. Now I'm going to show you how strong this is. They didn't even want to leave. The angels had to grab his people because they were so stubborn that they didn't even want to leave. They're in the wickedest place, but yet they didn't want to stay there. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said, Oh, my Lord, oh, not so, my Lord. Behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which... Thou hast shown unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountains, lest some evil take up me and die. Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one, and my soul shall live? And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for which thou hast spoken. Hast, hast thee, haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. So the angels are telling them that they would have been destroyed if it wasn't for Lot. I told you, even though I didn't like Lot, Lot has some redemptive power. Therefore, the name of the city was Zoar. I'm a, and you know really the story how wicked Lot was. Lot's daughters had sex with him. Which made me think he should have went on and gave him to the men. Because I mean, his daughters came up with that. And they supposed to be virgins, but yet they come up with that. But that's, that's come from being raised in Sodom. See, when you let your children be raised around perversion, and them little cousins and aunties and nephews and little people in your house all the time that's wicked, and you want to know why that spirit, even though your child ain't even into that, that child is a virgin, but yet all of a sudden they got this sexual demon in them, and you want to know where they come from, it's them little cats, them, your little nieces and nephews and little people you don't want to offend, their mamas and them, and you let them spend in the night and all that stuff, and you wonder where they getting that spirit from, where they getting it from there. And he overthrew those cities and the plain and the of the city. And wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Therefore, I mean, the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham got up early in the morning to go to the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain. And behold, lo, the smoke of the country went up as a smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass when God destroyed the city of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of, of the overthrow. When he overthrew the cities in, the, in, which the, in which Lot dwelt. And Lot went out of Zoar and dwelt in a mountain. And his two daughters 
with him, for he feared to dwell in Zoar, and he dwelt in a cave with his two daughters. And this is what's talking about how his daughters went into the perversion and had sex with their father. Now, my point that I'm making here is, this is where we are in America. If God judged them, how can he not judge us? We parade our sin. The payment for, Amer the payment for perversion is already coming. The stock market's crashing. Everything's going down. It's pain. Trust me, they're going to throw off on other things. Yeah. But it's, this is why it's coming. Yeah. It's coming because we've opened the door to perversion. And before God would allow his creation to be corrupted that way, he'll bring judgment. And that's what judgment is coming. Amen. And I'm telling y'all, it's coming to the point that I want you to prepare your life. I'm not just telling you to prepare your spirit. Because you should already be prayed up and ready to see Amen. Jesus if you have to see Jesus. I'm talking about prepare your life. Prepare to survive because we may have to. I told y'all, man, this, this rapture thing messed us up. Because now we're looking to go up. The trouble's here. Let's go up. Now we ain't going up yet. And so if you, if, if you think you're going, you ain't going to be prepared. But you got to be prepared to take care of your neighbors, people that don't know Christ. But you ain't got nothing. So God's people, if anybody should have something, it should be God's people. We are the ones going to be sharing. So you need to prepare. Trust me when I tell you, if you have money in the stock market, pull it immediately. Get it out. Get your 401k out. Cash it in immediately. Get it out and take that money and invest it in something that you can survive with. Invest it in something you can help somebody with, but don't get it out. Don't, you don't need to put it in the gold either because you, you put it in stuff that ain't going to be worth nothing. You can't eat gold. You can't eat gold. The richest man, when this stuff go down, is going to be the man with canned goods. Even the top economists are telling us Store can go. The top people are saying the crash is going to be worse than we ever thought it was going to be. And when it comes, it's going to be too late because everybody's going to think the same thing at the same time. And everybody's going to run to the same place. And by that time, it's going to be too full and it, it's going to be gone. And people are going to be fighting and killing each other over little stuff that we once would have threw in the street. But because now it's the last of it. And so we as children of God have to already be prepared. And don't depend on me. You better be doing your own preparation. Now, you hearing what I'm saying? You have to think like that. Now, what if don't nothing happen? Well, I got plenty of stuff stocked. We're going to eat this. We're going to eat this. That's why you get stuff that don't explode. We'll eat it. But I ain't even thinking nothing. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Now, why would Jesus warn us ahead of time to sit there in the tragedy and don't know that it's coming, but we're going to sit there like the world as if we ain't got no God that's already warning us and told us this stuff is coming? It shouldn't catch us off guard. So I'm telling y'all, even though it's watching online, get yourself prepared. Watch that message on emergency preparedness. Judgment is here. We can't stop the judgment. I know y'all want to pray about it. Let's just pray it. No, we, we, I think we passed that. I think God's, it's got to happen. God's going to do what he got to do. We're living in the time of it, and we're going to have to just do it. We're going to have to let it happen. So therefore, God's people got to be prepared. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We spend so much time preparing our spirit. But not realize, okay, what if I got to live? What if I got to live through this? What, what, see, let, 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 me get, let me get real with you. You know, what, what, what would happen if, if you woke up tomorrow with no gas, lights, and water? What would you do? do you, would you know what to do? That's how quick it can happen because when it happens, it's going to happen fast. The reason, that's why they won't, they, won't let the, they won't let it go down yet because they're not ready for it to happen. But when it happens, it's going to happen quick. So what would you do if you woke up tomorrow with no gas and lights? All the food you got is the food you got in your cupboard right now. What would you do if you woke up tomorrow and the money you got in the bank and your job is gone and the money you got ain't worth nothing? Then what? What would you do? What have you done to prepare for anything? Do you have two weeks worth for anything for a disaster? Why would God tell his people ahead of time and then we not do nothing about it? That's your fault. I've been saying this for a long time. The emergency preparedness was two years ago I ministered that. That was two years ago I was, I was saying about preparation. And then we at, this, we at the door. And people are calling me from all over the country about that emergency preparedness, thanking the Lord they saw it. And, and actually going out doing what I said. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, many of you all don't believe like that. You don't think nothing can happen, and so you ain't got no preparation. But I'm telling you, you need to prepare. Not only do you need to prepare, you need to, be able, you need to prepare to be able to keep what you got. You got to protect it. Because when ain't nobody else got nothing, they're going to come after what you got. 
You got to be able to be able to protect, but you have to have the mind of sharing. Yeah. We are trying to be a blessing. Yeah. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I've been trying to tell y'all to invest in 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 in, in things that 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 that, that are non-perishable things. You know, stop buying so much clothes and stuff and think about things that survival things. Yeah. Most people ain't got a flashlight in the house. Right. Ain't got a book of matches. See, they have nothing to survive with. What if, what if, because y'all don't even think, that's why Jesus said, be, you know, pray that this, this thing don't happen to you in the winter. Right, right. <laughs> yes. what, if, what, if, what, if, what if the winter time come and, 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 and the power's off? You have no heating. How are you going to get warm? Right, right. Most people ain't got a heater. They ain't got a stove, I mean, a, a wood stove. They don't have no way to generate any heat. Them little solar things, real cheap, but they ain't nobody got none. Once something go down, all the stuff I'm saying is going to be worth more than you got. Everybody going to think the same way at the same time. And they're going to bum rush every store. I know you think it's a movie. But if you wake up, and it could have happened yesterday. It could have happened the day before. If they didn't take that uh, stimulus money and change them numbers and fuse that stock market, it would have happened. Right. People would have ran to the bank and ran to the, and get they pull out their 401ks and pull out their money. And once you pull that money out, it's over. It's going to be a run on the bank. The bank's going to close. Because banks ain't got your money. Right, right. <laughs> ain't no money in there. Right. When the bank closed down, it's going to be like Greece. Right. It'll be worse in America because we got guns and we take. <laughs> and so everybody's going to think the same way. My baby need food. My baby need pamphlet. I got to go get to the store. See, everybody's going to run to the, got to get water. Got, everybody's going to think the same way, run to the same place at the same time, and it's going to be chaos. Yeah. And it's already known it's only two days' worth of food in the grocery store. Right. Two days. And that's if you get there in time. Right. Right. So you have to think like that. I didn't want to think like that, but Hurricane Katrina made me think that way. When I saw how, how can people be, how can in the modern time, people live like refugees in the city, or millions of people, and all the black folks are stuck on like a little aisle in the water with nothing to drink, dying for just the necessities of having water in the house. Dying for something that's having some ration bars and an extra blanket and something to cover you from the sun. Just simple things. A bug out kid, I told y'all about a bag that you grab and go that got the stuff in there that you might need to survive with. Y'all thought I was just, y'all, I know y'all probably thought how he's a, the best, he done went on, he done went off the wilderness, uh, he done been watching them wilderness shows. I have been watching them. But when I, but I, but, but the Lord spoke after me, he said, teach my people to be prepared because it's going to be too late when it go down. Now, I would have never said this a while back because I don't like to bring alarm to people and I ain't trying to scare you or nothing, but I believe now it's, if you do have any money been wrapped up in investments, get it out. Amen. Get it out. Amen. And then don't set on the money because money ain't worth nothing. Right. Take that money and buy goods with it while you can. Take it and buy something to survive with while you can. Buy goods with it. Buy fishing rods. Buy hunting stuff. Buy stuff that you can use in case it's all go down and all you got is what you got. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, see, you know, one, 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 I watched a movie a while back. I can't think of the name of the movie. But it was a good movie to give you an illustration to make you think about what if. And the movie, I can't, what was it? Maybe we, we saw this movie. It was about, I'll tell you, some of y'all remember if I just give you the plot of it. I don't remember the whole movie. I remember it came on and the water went off. It was a white guy and his wife and his son and the water went off. And he ran to the bathroom. No, something happened on the news. It was an explosion or something. And he went to the bathroom, immediately filled up the water tub. Filled up the tub with water. And then it got so bad to where it, something happened where it wouldn't rain or they couldn't grow food. It was something that went down. And people turned to cannibalism. And literally, they had a gun, but the gun was just for them to kill themselves with if it gets so bad. That's what this movie was about. And it made you think about if, if necessities. What if, you know, you know, what, 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 what if, you know? And, and I'm not trying to say that to scare anybody. I'm trying to tell you, our God already told us that this stuff is going to happen. Yeah. So we have to be in, be, in a, be in a time of, I know, see, you, you, people don't want to think this way because it's easy to say not to think about it, and that way you think if you don't think about it, I ain't got to worry about it. But if it happens, whether you thought about it or not, right. your reality is going to change. Right. 
And I'm telling you, if it was, if this was really supposed to happen back maybe a month ago when that glitch happened in the uh, stock market, and the, they said the, the American Airlines and this glitch happened and they shut down the stock market, that was because the free fall was coming. The stock market was going to crash, and they cut it off to keep people from trading. And then they infused it, changed the numbers the next day and said, oh, everything's all right. And they keep on noticing, it, we keep going discouraged, and then the next day they'll come back. See, but they can't, it's coming too fast. They can't cover the fact that China's going down. How are you going to cover the fact they're going down and we up and we owe them money? So that means we're going down, but our, our enclosure is going to be big. And so you have to have some type of preparation. It's going to be too, once it hit, it's going to be too late. Well, it won't be too late. You can do what you got to do, but you're going to have to hustle. So then, the, this is where the market's coming in at. The market's coming in when you ain't got nothing to eat. You can't buy or sell. Well, now what people going to do? Well, we got the solution. Come on, take this mark. You can eat. See, so you're going to have to understand what survival is. See, I, I know y'all don't want to think this way. I know y'all want to think America the beautiful. We'll be here forever, but it's going down. It's going down, and they are, they are, they are saving this every day. They are doing something to keep this co economy from imploding. But it's, just, it's almost like a, like, like, like a water in a boat. Eventually, you ain't going to, can, you can get the buckets, but eventually, the boat's going to sink. And that's where we are now. And God's telling his people ahead of time. That's why I preach this. I, pre I said this two years ago. I told y'all, get ready. I was saying this back in 2008. I told y'all, get prepared, get prepared. Do what you got to do to be prepared. And so now you should be prepared. See? If you have extra money, start preparing now. Go to the stores, buy stuff that won't perish. At least have your family two weeks of food. Two weeks of why? What's wrong with that? But I mean, people act like you crazy for trying to prepare. But that's what you're supposed to do. I got, I got, we nuts for preparing. But to prepare a man to live, you'll live. Because why are they trying to traffic jam, get into the store to get what you already got? You, are, you, you were smart enough to prepare. And so this is what I'm saying, man. We have to think this way. I hate, you know, I, I really thought, me and my wife were looking at money. I said, this, I said, I said, this is it. That bad boy started falling and said, this is it. I said, China going down, that's <laughs> it. And see, in order to cover this economy crashing war, America is, is, is starting a war with China and Russia because they've got to cover this fact that the economy is crashing. That's, so there's going to be a war, too. So who knows what might come down the pipe? Right. Now we gonna pray, and if we die, we die. But what if we? What if you live? Right. What if you live? Have you prepared to live through this? Right. You know we think so much about dying yeah. in this. You know how you think about it. Well, if you gonna die, you are gonna die. But what if? What if you live? Did you think about? I might have to live through this. Have you prepared any, anything to live through this? Some areas are gonna be worse than others. Some areas are going to be totally destroyed. The Bible says a third of some areas are going to be gone. Everything going to be gone. But some areas are going to be, it's going to be survive. people are going to be surviving. People are going to survive and it's all the way till Christ come. So they're telling you that everybody ain't going to take the mark. Some people are going to have figured it out to survive. Satan wants you to think it ain't no hope. This, it's over for you. Because what, what you do when you, ain't, when you feel that way? Ain't nothing even doing nothing. I ain't even preparing. If it happened to me, it's going to happen. My, that's, that, that's that Negro thought. If it happened to me, it's going to happen. You don't need to try and worry about it because, you know, if God dies, something, something. That that's foolishness. That's foolishness. Well, I ain't saying, I ain't, I ain't saying if I had to die, I'd die. But why do I have to die of starvation? Why do I have to die like everybody else? Why do I have to be the first one to die? <laughs> Can I survive a little while? You know, let me survive a little bit. But you know, you be on the first one. <laughs> you ain't prepared nothing. You know, when, they, when it get like that, people gonna wanna die, they gonna get hopeless. Niggas gonna be like, that's my, what died. That's really what that movie I told y'all was about. The, the wife got so hopeless, she just walked out in the wilderness and died. That's what happened. She walked out the door, in the wilderness with no coat on in the cold and just died because she couldn't handle, she couldn't take, her mind couldn't take the, the starvation or the, you know, poverty or whatever they was going through. See, but the Bible says, he that endures to the end shall be saved. So I'm thinking like a person that's going to endure. I'm thinking like an overcomer. 
Now, I know, I know, I know y'all not thinking like that now, but tomorrow, Amen. if something was to happen tomorrow, and, and remember, you, see, what you don't realize, if the stock market crash, your job is gone. Your, all this, it's over. If the stock market crash, because your company ain't going to be able to sustain, your company going to be worried about itself. The, they done with you. They ain't paying you no checks. They done. So everything is gone. The trucks stop rolling to your city. The trucking company stops trucking food to your city. You don't grow no food, so you got to wait. You got to prepare on the trucks to get the food here. But the trucking companies are done. Everything stops. And whatever you got, it ain't like it's like going to Walmart. Whatever you got is what you got. Now, here come the solution, the market. And people are going to say, man, I can't stop. Let me go on and take it. But if you thought about maybe I, maybe I can survive. Now if, you, now, 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 if you die, you die. The live is Christ. The die is gain. I'm, I'm just, I mean, I'm just, I'm just being real with you, but, but we focus so much on, the, on that part. Amen. That, you know, I got to lay my life now. That's what we focus on. But what if you wanted the ones that see the end and make it all the way to the end? What if you wanted the one that see him coming in the cloud? What if you wanted the ones? then that means that you had the thought about think up, take up a survival nature in order to do that. So if our whole city's wiped out with one bomb, okay, we all dead, we go see God. But what if, you, what if it, it ain't like that? Then you have to survive. Still being a witness. Still preaching the gospel. Still getting folks saved because you, th you think folks ain't going to want to get. The reason why they don't want to implode it because they know people going to get saved fast. Right. They don't want that. Yeah. All their pieces ain't in place for people to get saved. But you think people ain't going to get saved this happen? Yeah. Oh, you gonna, ain't, ain't going to be no turning down no prayer. Yeah. Ain't going to be no, ain't going to be no, ain't going to be no uh, Ahia and Yahuwah. Ain't going to be none of that name. Ain't going to be arguing about no names or nothing. <laughs> ain't, gonna, ain't nobody going to be arguing that, during that time. They argue because they don't think nothing's going to happen. But boy, you, what, then that hit, ain't going to be no argument. Who got God? They're going to want to come on. I want to be prayed for. I'm going to be baptized. Tell me what I got to do. Because they're going to realize the book is real. What we've been saying is real. Amen? Amen. So make sure that you, uh, I, would, I, would, I would suggest for homework, go online and watch that emergency preparation again. It's a pretty long teaching, but it's really, I was very thorough. Y'all know I was thorough. And I, I was so thorough. There are people calling me that are people who are into that stuff. And they're like, man, you, you went deep into the, you know, teaching people how to do it. And so don't just take it lightly. Try to get some of the stuff in your house. I remember, don't forget stuff like that bug out kit. That's very important because you might be at work and you might need to get home. And you might need some survival to get home. And, you know, and, and, <laughs> you know we, we, we just be buying little stuff at a time. You know, you ain't got, but now you ain't got time to buy little stuff because, you know, you need to get what you can get. Man, my wife, we was, I ain't, ain't going to say that. I don't want to say that. I ain't going to say that. <laughs> I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to say that. But anyway, <laughs> you got to make sure. I'm, 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 being, I'm being serious. We got, you know, we got, we got those, you know, those third world countries got life straws. You know what life straw is? You could drink dirty water, but the life straw will filter. Yeah, we got them. You get them on Amazon. Yeah, we got those. See, you should have one. <laughs> See, don't don't be don't be calm. I'm telling y'all. I'm gonna tell y'all tell now. Don't be calm and talking about path. The man, look, man. This is a different game now. I told you to prepare yourself. Now, what we gonna share with you? What we can share with you? But you know, you you brought this on yourself because right now you could prepare. But you go, you just going to Outback. You spent, you spent your survival money at Outback. One meal. You could have bought some ration bars the last year. Year you bought one meal. That's, you did, you, you brought that on yourself. You hear what I'm saying? We got who who, 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 who know what iodine tablets are? Yeah, iodine tablets. These are these are just little things you need. You throwing away containers you're supposed to put water in. You throw, the, you throw two liters away. You throwing all the containers away. Why not just fill them up and put them over? It don't matter if you, don't, you ain't got to use them. Put, put just a little dot, little, little dot, drop a bleach in it and leave it alone. See, that's just, that's just smart. 
I remember when the water went off on our street or something. And when we had, we had all this water already. Like, wasn't no problem for us. We already had water. Amen. We was prepared for that. If don't nothing happen, well, then you got it right there. Yeah. I don't understand the problem <laughs> with having it. Like, because you know your family going to think you're crazy when you tell them, I see, you don't see. You done, the, the, y'all done went all to deep end. Because you got, now people in the country live this way. People in the country have preserves and jars of stuff. Oh, they have this stuff. But they don't ever say that about people in the country. But in the city, oh, see, they see you going crazy. That preacher done got y'all thinking about, you going to say, that's what's wrong with you. You went crazy. And then they'd be the main ones over your house. You got water? <laughs> Man, I ain't. <laughs> no, nah, we can't, you can't be like that. You got to share it, or God, or if you don't share it, you'll lose it. You have to have a charitable heart. But then you can't do, you got to do for yourself. First, Bible says to do for you. You got to do for yourself, or you can help others too. So, all I'm saying is, you know, while you can do it, you know, especially if you got money laying around, invest. That's stupid right now. That's stupid. I mean, pull that money out and put it to use. Put it to work. Put that money to work. And you can't get better than having stuff this, 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 this laid up. Because I know we're going to have to share with each other. I know we're going to have to. I know we do. That's why if you go downstairs, you see all kinds of stuff I already got down there. I already know. We got to feed folk. I knew that. We got big pots to feed people. We're going to have to make a whole bunch of soups just to feed folk. I know that. But that's why we got all that stuff down there. 100 pound bags of this and that. But don't rely on that. Don't rely on that. Amen. Have your own stuff. Amen. Because then we may need you to bring your stuff yeah. and help, help us out. So, so I'm, I'm just telling you, now, you know, it's, it's, it's funny to talk this way. It's, it's kind of like to, to wrap your mind around we talking this way. But better to be safe than sorry. I bet you people over in Greece wish they thought like that. Look at what they're doing now. Them people is in trouble, man. Greece? Do y'all know that was like the whitest country you can get? You can't get no whiter than them Greek people. And they, they doing, you mean they doing bad? You think we ain't going to do bad? Bad is coming. Bad is coming. If we, was in, we went in Kroger's yesterday, and they just had to be remodeling the shelf. And all that stuff was going on the shelf over there. I said, oh, baby, what's going on? Then I said, she said, baby, they remodeling. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, oh, man, they, 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 they ain't restocking. What's going on? You know, that's, that's sending me into stuff. Well, we're going to spend every dime now. <laughs> We were, you know, so she said, oh, baby, it's a sign they remodel. That's okay. I'm living in preparedness, y'all. I ain't, I ain't playing no game. Now, if this don't happen, praise the Lord. We got meals for a while. But if it do happen, then, but it's going, listen, y'all, ain't no if. Every economist, every, even, even, even people that are not Christian, these ain't even Christian thing. This is just secular economists are saying. And see, I'm going to show y'all why it's happening. All these billionaires and people with money are leaving America, and they're pulling all their money out. The billionaires are taking all their money out. They've been doing it for a long time. They're getting out of this. They got the money to get out. Why are these preachers not preaching it? Because they got houses overseas. Wow. They got houses. These mega preachers got houses overseas, and as soon as it go down, they're going to jump in their jet and go, and you're going to be stuck here. They ain't waking up their people. Why do you think they're not preaching it? Because they, they already got houses overseas. They already know where they got out, and they know where they're going at. You the one gonna be hurt, so you gotta prepare yourself. Amen. And I pray every every one of them to do that. Well, I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna say, I ain't gonna say that. Lord, don't let me start, don't let me start uh, giving them over. <laughs> I ain't gonna give them over. But but you but you be prepared, amen. amen. Be prepared if you have to leave her. Amen. Then I told y'all about that. Be prepared if you have to leave her. You might have to leave her. Because there might be something, or something somewhere else in another city that may be better than where you... I'm just, I know we don't want to talk about that. But they ain't showing y'all these shows like Lost and all these uh, apocalyptic shows for nothing. They priming you for it. They getting you ready to accept this thing that's coming. And so we're going to have to be ready. Stand on your feet. Is this a note here, huh? Okay, all right, all right, I'll leave it there. Amen. So be ready. That's the thing, be ready, amen. 
Hey, Amen. I wish Brother Grant was here. I really need to, because he was, me and him was talking about that. I was trying to tell him some things, but, but you'll tell him. <laughs> uh, he's probably listening online or something, but you'll tell him. Amen. You got to be ready. Amen. That's why we ought to have real relationships. You got to really have love for each other. How many of y'all know if we ain't got that real love, then I ain't going to help you. <laughs> I might not help you in that time. That's why I got to really love. I, now, you up in here clicked up with folk you don't like. That might be the one that got the, they got the bowl of rice. <laughs> and you've been, you been having an attitude with them all that time. And they just might say, you know what? <laughs> ain't nothing cracking with y'all. We ain't even got enough. <laughs> but we as Christians going to have to share even down to our last. And so that's, the, you, know how, you, know how, you know how many people going to get saved? Just by the act of our generosity, by us showing them Christ, that we had enough mind to prepare that we could even share a meal with people. We have something to give away. People going to come with babies. What are we going to do, y'all? Where do you think they're going to come to the church? They're going to come with babies, and we ain't got no food, formula, milk. What, 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 what are we going to do? It's going to be the job of the church, or we're going to have to shut down. That's why we have to be prepared. That's why we, me and my wife have been stocking for a long time because I know that when it go down, we're going to have to break out these pots and feed folk. But y'all shouldn't be thinking that way because y'all already listening and y'all already have means to do. Now, if it's not the Lord, the Lord, the Lord be gracious to us. Give us more years. Praise the Lord. But if you don't, then we, you know, we ready. <laughs> 